Why don't we open the meeting uh, and we'll say it then. <coughs> 6.30, call the meeting to order. Number two, accept the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, can I make one amendment to the um, agenda? I'd like to add item number... 17. Um, why don't we say 19A, where it's just going to be uh, that we officially sign the documents in open meeting. Mm -hmm. So 19A will be signature of whatever documents are. Move these men to the agenda. Well, before we do, <laughs> Kim, do we want to remove number 17 also? How do we want to do that? It's, uh, that's the uh, Mr. Sullivan, I believe it was. Uh, I would leave that on. Until until, until, okay, okay. Move the amended agenda. And the second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. The next is a, a, a town employee recognition award item. And this is something that's been going on for probably, probably 15 years. Uh, all of that, I think, maybe 20 years. And it's it, it, in this very small way, uh, a, a way to show the town's appreciation to the town employees who have served us for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years in some cases. A lot of times, the work of the town employees go unnoticed, unrecognized. Uh, but those of us who were involved up here and the town administrator and and others who see the results of the town employees work on a day-to-day -day basis recognize the, the the amount of time and effort and dedication that goes into uh, being an municipal employee in the town of Situate. Only yesterday morning at six o'clock people are down clearing the causeway of of debris caused by the high tide. Things like that aren't seen by many people but all of a sudden they drove, drive over Bailey's Causeway and it's clear. It wasn't clear at 5.30, it's clear at 6 o'clock. Things like that are just done uh, on a daily basis, and we can't say how much we appreciate it. We, we really, really do. Uh, sometimes town employees take a little bit of a knock of municipal employees for different reasons, and, and I can guarantee people right now, from what I've seen, it's not justified. They work hard, if not harder, than, than, than many people in the public and the private sector. Having said all that, uh, what we're going to do tonight is ask the department heads to present the awards to the people in their department in order to facilitate this a bit. Um, and anyone who's not here, if the department heads would then make sure that they get their, uh, their recognition tomorrow or the next day or someday this week in their own departments, if you could give that to them. Uh, the first one would be Chief Stewart. I don't know, Chief, if anyone's here. I don't see anybody. Okay, maybe then you could pick up the words from Kim tomorrow uh, and present them to, to uh, the officers involved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Treasurer Collector's Office. We have two going out today. We have one for Karen Crowell, who's been here five years. Jane will give her that award. Karen, thank you very much. <laughs> and the next to our treasurer collector, Jane Lapato, who will be shortly leaving us to go to Cohasset. We wish her nothing but good luck. And, and, and then, thank you. Uh, Rick Judge is not here, I don't believe. Anyone from the fire? Those guys are working. Uh, Department of Public Works. Al, Paula Barry, 10 years. Paula Barry. Paula's here somewhere, I know. Paula, thank you. She said it's been the best 10 years of her life. Looking <laughs> 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 for 30 more. <laughs> uh, Kevin Stanley, five years in the public grounds. Thank you. And Tom Houghton, 10 years. Tom, thank you. Tom's had a few more years than Kevin, uh, and he's, he's 
been training Kevin and all the tricks of the trade. So okay. Kevin is he's uh, a good man. <laughs> he is yeah, a good man. Good teacher. Yeah, he's a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And now probably one of the most recognizable people in town, uh, Paul Gonzalez of the transfer station. Hey, Paul. <laughs> I think boy, in the course of a week, by the course of a year, more people <laughs> see Paul than they do anyone else in town. Is they? And he does a good job doing it too. So thank you all again. This is this will probably be about a three-hour meeting. Uh, uh, before we go, a uh, special award, and this is going to be for ten years uh, to our own Kim Donovan. Is there a, let me give Kim her award now. Kim, thank you. <laughs> Kim was 15 years, excuse me. Uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, Could you please tell us who the police officers and firefighters are? Uh, yeah, read them all. <coughs> thank you. Sure. Um, the, uh, we'll start with the fire department. Five years, Craig Carter. Steve Goddard and Robert McDonough. 10 years, Linda Barrich and Thomas Siri. 15 years, Peter Downs and Thomas Hearn. 25 years, um, Richard San uh, Janicek. And 30 years, Richard Handrahan. 30 years, so that's. In the police department, you've got uh, Gerald O'Brien, 10 years. Uh, James Gilmartin, 20 years. Suzanne McDonough, 20 years. Thomas Hamaker, 25 years. Mary Rappold, 25 years. And Arthur Wood, 25 years. Want me to keep going? Yeah, keep going since we. Sure. Um, we did the treasure collector. So the library. Um, Sydney Peterson, five years, and Susan Pope, ten years. Oh, Susan, Susan is here. I think I saw. Oh, Susan. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Great. As you're coming up, we'll read the guidelines. Great. So we have a, a form here that is the guidelines for the walk-in period, <clears throat> and I'll just read it because the, the clerk is uh, absent today. The, uh, the purpose of the walk-in period is an opportunity for the public to address town business. The walk-in period is for comments only, not questions and answers. Where appropriate, selectmen may respond directly or the board chairman may direct the, the question, comment, or opinion to the appropriate person to respond. Each speaker during the walk-in period must state his or her name, address, and the subject he or she will be addressing. Each speaker during the walk-in period is limited to speak once, five minutes in length, which is enforced by the board chair. Any request of extension of this time limitation is at the sole discretion of the board chair. Comments must be addressed to the board, not the audience. Speakers must present their remarks in a civil and courteous manner and refrain from personal comments or accusations. If in the opinion of the board chair, comments by a member of the public during the walk-in period are not related to town business or in any way violates these guidelines, the board chair may no will notify the speaker to either redirect his or her comments to town business. If the individual persists to violate these guidelines, he or she will be asked to stop speaking. If the speaker is advised again to stop speaking because he's violated these guidelines, the board chair may have the person removed from the meeting. Um, and just to qualify this, the reason why um, it cannot go beyond these, these levels is because it has to be posted so that um, it's uh, per open meeting law that there, everybody has the opportunity to discuss and is, is um, informed of what the discussions will be. So we can't just all of a sudden bring up a topic that the whole public is not um, is aware that's going to be on and they can participate in the discussion. So that's why we follow these. Thank you. Having said that, <laughs> Whoa, yeah, great to talk. <laughs> <laughs> hate to, hate to put, make you the first person after that, but uh, well, if you name and address, if you my would. My name is Ellen Bernardi, and I live at 616 Hatherley Road. Uh, uh, my first point, I think, is one of clarification, although I appreciate the rules of conduct. Um, I'm wondering if uh, this is the right mode, and you can tell me if it isn't. I would like to know who makes the, does, or clarify, for the use of Pier 44, will that decision be made by the selectmen? Uh, it, it will be. And having understand that, I would like to either be uh, entered on the agenda, if, if that's the correct protocol. I would like to address the selectmen before a decision is made on the use of Pier 44. Um, because I have been doing some research, I have been in touch with the MBTA, and I have information that I think would benefit um, the townspeople and the selectmen in uh, knowing some of the criteria or reviewing some of the criteria and um, determining the use. I think we have a plan that will benefit all people of the town and the criteria. So that's. Why don't uh, you do this? My suggestion would be put it together in a letter or memo uh, to Tim Donovan, send it to Tim, saying what it is, asking if it could be put on the agenda, a future agenda, and we'll look at it and deal with it. Um, okay, can I get an answer tonight, though, as to whether or not a decision on the use will um, not be made until I, and I don't know if there are other people that would like to approach the selectmen, uh, until that time, so that a decision is, basically, so that a decision is not made before myself or other interested parties have an opportunity to address this board. We have, we can probably just sort of guarantee that no decision. I'm sure you're going to get your letter in within the next week or two. Oh, yes. So therefore, Fine. if your letter comes in, we'll deal with it. Uh, there'll be no decision made in that period of time. I just want to point out, I mean, we've had probably a year and a half or two years of, of discussions, meetings, uh, committees being formed, committees meeting. Mm -hmm. So there's been certainly ample time for people to give their input. Uh, if there's some new input that you want to put into this mix, mm -hmm. then we are more than welcome. Well, judging from comments that I'm hearing from townspeople, I think there's still a fair amount of confusion and misunderstanding. And having spent uh, time now um, with 
MBTA with the paperwork that has come through, I think it would uh, behoove the uh, selectmen and the townspeople to hear, and I'm not opposed to a limited period of time or whatever to make a presentation, but I, I would like be, to that, do that. That may be fine. Okay. Right, there are questions? Not to have a lot of discussion, but go ahead. It's a walk-in. We don't want it back and forth. I understand. Go ahead. But just one quick point. You know, the board is not going to just write a letter to the town and say this is what we've decided. We're going to have a big public discussion about okay. our deliberations. So Fine. This is not I going to be understand. happening behind closed doors. This is going to be an open discussion and an open meeting that's posted like we were talking about earlier. Makes me feel very your, good. Thank to you. To your benefit is this. The, the meeting is going to be at some point in the future. It's going to be in the news. And if need be, maybe we could ask that uh, if you're going to submit something, then that maybe we can ask our assistant to, administrative assistant, to notify you of the date of the meeting so Perfect. that you can come at that time to do a presentation mm -hmm. instead of maybe trying to do something separate and apart. That will probably be a I meeting to deal that. with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, number five, vote one day malt, uh, wine and malt beverage license for your charity in Hollis Street. <coughs> Number five. Hi, how are you? I'm not Father Bradley, I know. as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so Father Bradley. Dramatic train change. <laughs> That's a good thing, maybe. Father well, Bradley's in France right now. So yes. So we are, you know, here in his stead. Right. <laughs> so I think um, he's already sent the application in anyway for the um, beer and wine license for the Foyer of Charity um, <coughs> auction and garden party on the 23rd. And so we are just here to find out whether or not we can pick it up for him. Morgan. My name is Florence Ely, and I'm 4th Avenue, 5 4th Avenue. And I'm Ann Rouleau. I'm on Manlot Road. Thank you both. Motion. I think Tony just asked to make one. Go ahead, Tony. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license to the foyer of charity at 74 Hollett Street for a garden party anniversary celebration and fundraiser on Saturday, June 23rd from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? Discussion from the floor? Everyone, all, I'm sorry. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can pick that up from Kim. In a couple of days, Kim? <coughs> sure. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you both. Okay. And Thank you're welcome you. to attend if you'd like. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> very much. Uh, the next is uh, a one day wine and malt beverage license at Central Marine Center, Edward Foster Road. This is the tweak. He was going to be here, right? Yes. Why don't we hold off on it? Uh, if they may suggest until the end of the meeting and, and see if he uh, shows up so that we can do what we want. Uh, next, discussion special permit, Knights of Columbus, uh, the annual carnival. Anyone here from the Knights, Mr. Limbacher? I'm here annually. Annually. <laughs> and we're very happy about that, too. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but a tremendous effort and a tremendous benefit, I think. So what we're looking for is the dates are the 7th, 16th through the 22nd. The operator, the operation, everything is identical to what it has been in the past. Um, and we'd be coming in on Monday, setting up Monday morning, operational Tuesday through Saturday, and be <coughs> off Cole Parkway probably 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. So, any questions? Tony? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I assume you got the letter from the police chief? I haven't seen it, no. Um, he had some concerns about the number of officers that were going to be on duty and and how many we thought had to be involved in it. Yeah, I, I talked to Brian Hallway just before this meeting, and I'm, I'm satisfied that what he's suggesting will be, you know, will work because it's pretty much consistent with what we've done in the past. Yeah, I think there's a few changes. I think between four and six officers, I think, is what he's suggesting. But I, I think contingent on his letter, if he's if he's content with it, then I think. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll comply with what he's looking for. Or motion? Motion. Uh, or uh, question? Sorry. Um, just, Bill, just something about the dates. Um, the dates of our motion read, the special event permit is from the 17th to the 21st. You said 16 to 22. Later in the motion it says setup will be 16. Do we need to add something about the 22nd yeah, in there for you? 
Yeah, if, if, if you make it from the, the, the 16th to the 20, this 22nd, that covers the whole time I'll be on Cole Parkway. 22nd is breakdown day? Yeah, we actually, we break down on Saturday night. Uh, after we close, we start breaking it down in the final the final vehicles and that are off, the, off Cole Parkway by 10 o'clock or so. Okay, so I'll just change that first 21st to 22nd. And then the other question I had for me, Mr. Chair, is, again, going through the permit application under... Um, Harbor Master, it talks about additional security for Friday and Saturday night for looking out for the docks and the floats. Um, and there's a there's a um, comment about the funding of that last year versus this year. And I didn't know. Trisha, has there been any follow up on that? Well, well, with the board's approval, what Kim will do when she writes up the approval is all these notes go as part of the the approval. So okay. the chief's yeah. comments as well as the harbor masters. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. well, what we've done in the past is, is on, on the nights with the fireworks is to come back up and, and pay if they have an extra person on, and we pay for that person. Yep, that's great. Perfect. That way there protects the people people from going down on the docks. Oh, no, yeah. Safety I, there as well mm -hmm. as personal property. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and obviously I'm a supporter. I'm just going through reading what yep. the department heads have said. Do a motion? Please. Uh, move the board of and vote to grant the special event permit for the Knights of Columbus annual carnival from July 17 to July 22, 2012, from 7 to 11 p.m. in accordance with all conditions set forth by town departments and the town administrator. Carnival setup day will be Monday, July 16, 2012. Selectman also grant the Knights of Columbus use of Cole Parkway for this event. Second. Uh, discussion? From the floor. Seeing none, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Good luck. Thank you, Chris. Uh, item number seven, at the request of the applicant, Gil Sullivan, he's asked that this be postponed till the 19th. So with the board's permission, we'll take a motion to postpone this to the 19th. Move to postpone um, item seven, uh, agenda item seven to June 19th. Second. Yeah, it's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? John? Yes. Just a question? Yep. Uh, and I'm kind of glad that this was postponed because I didn't want to make it particular in this application. But we always say that, um, you know, immediate neighbors must be notified. How is that ensured that that actually happens? Because last year I had some neighbors about a, one of these things say, hey, I never heard about this. And I went back and looked. The person had said they had, they had notified. It's not our responsibility, but... It's yeah, been how done. Do we, um, how do we do it? You know, it's been done on the honor system, okay. and certainly um, the police department will hear about it from those neighbors. Um, you know, there's no real penalty, obviously, yeah. unless we would not consider any future yeah. requests. But okay. um, it has been done on the honor system. Great. Thanks. Uh, next, a discussion of the Gulf of Maine award. Uh, Samantha Wood, June DeBarris, if you'd come up, thank you. Thank you and welcome. How are you? Samantha, how are you? Hello, welcome. Well, thank you for You're welcome. having us. <laughs> um, Samantha Woods, Executive Director for the North and South Rivers Watershed Association. Uh, supervisor of the Search and Water Department. Um, well, here, I think we are here to give you some good news tonight. Um, this must be awards night, huh? You guys have. <laughs> Um, as you know, the town of Situit has been working with the North and South Rivers Watershed Association, um, as well as many governmental agencies, to restore more natural stream flow and herring to the first herring brook, while at the same time ensuring that your community's water supply is safe and meeting the needs of the community. Recently, we have hit a milestone in that effort. This past spring, after implementing an operational plan for the first time, to release water over the fish ladders and the dams at both the reservoir and the old oak and bucket pond. We're pleased to tell you that our volunteers have documented a limited return of herring uh, for the first time uh, in documented, you know, in de decades probably, uh, within to into the old oak and bucket pond. Um, there's still work to do um, to restore the population, obviously. We need to improve the fish ladders at both the reservoir and Old Oak and Bucket Pond and continue to seek out ways to uh, conserve water to ensure adequate water is available for the out-migration period in the fall. However, this return is proof of concept that it may be possible to restore a population at this site, and we're very pleased about that. Um, and as part of this effort, uh, the Town of Situates Water Department was nominated 
by our staff person, Sarah Grady, who works in our offices under the Massachusetts Bays Program, uh, to the Gulf of Maine Council Sustainable Communities Award, and you were chosen. Um, your community was chosen as the only community within the Gulf of Maine region, which includes Massachusetts, New Hampshire, uh, Maine, and the Atlantic provinces of Canada, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, so it's an international award. Um, Sarah uh, will be attending the award ceremony tomorrow night. Um, since Jim couldn't make it, he has to make sure you guys have water. Yeah. Uh, and she'll be bringing the plaque back here to present it to the water department for the efforts. She'll be back on Friday. Great. Um, I just want to thank Jim in particular and Al Bangert and, of course, you all as the water um, board for the town for your cooperation in these efforts. And um, let's hope we can continue to work well together and bring back the little fishies. So, Jim, do you have anything you want to say? I just appreciate the water commissioner standing beside us and uh, working with us on getting straightened out. Thomas, the board, thank you both. Phenomenal. I, I heard the email, or heard the email, listen to me. I, I read the email earlier and I was like, fab, I'm just excited about it. Um, the question I have is, you mentioned if there is, if there are herring going back into like old oak and bucket, mm -hmm. I know people are fishing there. Is there going to be maybe some restrictions that we got to we may need to consider if if it continues to prevent yeah. stock from getting depleted? Well, depleted? right now, uh, herring the taking of herring is banned on the coast of uh, Massachusetts, and so uh, there's a sign right there at the fish ladder that says there's no t no taking of herring. So um, I think most fishermen know that, um, and are pretty respectful of it because most people who fish realize that these little herring are the um, very base of the food chain that, that you know, the big fish right. are coming in for, so right. they don't want to take their bait. <laughs> but if I could also just chime in, in addition to being important as fish, you know, as we've often commented, but just for people walk, watching, um, it's an indicator of the health of our whole water, <laughs> our water system, because the fish aren't there if the water's not good. And uh, that's why this is been supported also by the DEP and part of our water withdrawal permit and all this sort of stuff because it's a very good example of the quality of the water. And then just at a, at a larger scale, we also hear a lot of things about the uh, plight of uh, <coughs> fishing and declining saltwater fish stocks. And there are a lot of studies out there that clearly show that herring being the base of the food chain out there as well. Uh, the decline of herring over the last 30, 40 years may or may not have been also contributing to declining fish stocks. So, you know, every 10 a foothold we can make for the, for the herring on the freshwater aspect of their life cycle also contributes to, um, potentially contributes to the health of the commercial saltwater fleets over years. So hopefully we can keep this moving forward for tens of years forward so we um, are helping both freshwater and saltwater side of things. The work you folks have been doing with Rosen's Water Resources Committee and Al and, and uh, Jim and everybody is really going to have a large impact across the spectrum. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Again, thank you. Uh, I think Rick just mentioned the, the work of our water department and how intricate that is to this whole program. But a special thanks to Samantha from the board <coughs> of the South and South River Watershed Association. Uh, we've become Good partners, and we, we want to continue that partnership. You certainly are a great benefit to us, and I hope uh, we'll be able to benefit to you in, in, in towards our common goal, and that's to make the water surrounding situate and the coast better. So thank you both. Thanks for coming in. We're thrilled. And if Jim could, thank you. could, when you do get that award, bring it up here. Maybe we can take a look at it and get it back to you. We, we will. It's we something we're really proud of, and thank it you. should be. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good work. Thank you, guys. Too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Kevin. Kevin has some contracts uh, to be awarded. No awards for this one. It's just a simple contract for uh, Blossom Street um, as part of the street acceptance program. Um, there were going to be some improvements made to Blossom Street, which would be covered under a betterment to the residents, as as I said, part of the street acceptance. We put it out to bid and. Um, this is what we came up with, T.L. Edwards for 36740 <clears throat> Okay, discussion from the board. Just quick, Kevin, what did we estimate this would be? We were right around 34, five or something like that. We were in, we were in the range. I thought it was pretty close. And this is funded through the same mechanism that we've done the last ones where 
right, we, we front the money fund at the last town meeting right. yep. so it comes in and, and the betterments out. will yep. come in and fund it great motion motion please Will the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the roadway improvement for Blossom Street, contract number 12-SA-07, to T.L. Edwards, Inc. of Avon, Massachusetts, for a total bid price of $36,740, with payment to be made at the unit prices and or lump sum prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, 100 percent performance and 100 percent labor and materials bond. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, the next is a paving contract, Al. That's being postponed. That's sure. being postponed. Makes it even easier. Uh, thank you. Before we go on to dis uh, discuss item number 10, uh, Mr. Twig is here, and maybe you could come up and we'll deal with number five. That's the one day wall wine and wall beverage license to Situate Marine Center. Mr. Twig, welcome again. How are you? Fine. Good, Good. evening, Board of Selectmen. Mr. Twig. Uh, again, if you just identify yourself in... Dan Twig, 22 Collier Road, Situate. Um, I'm going to be having an art opening uh, at the Situate Marine Center uh, on this Thursday from uh, 5 until 8. And we're looking for a license for to uh, give complimentary beer and wine. Discussion from the Board. I assume you've talked to the people running the Maritime Center. And I have. It's all on board with that? Yes. Motion. Motion. Go on. Anybody? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license to Daniel Twig for an art opening to be held on Thursday, June 7, 2012, at the Situate Maritime Center at 119 Edward Foster Road from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. pending receipt of a liability insurance certificate to be supplied by the applicant. Second. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Hi. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. <coughs> just, just an aside, uh, and I know this is probably impossible to reach everybody, but in the, it, in the future, if it's possible to give the town uh, administrative system enough leeway on these one-day liquor licenses, it makes it a lot easier for her and for us also. Sometimes it's not possible; it comes up, it has to be done immediately, but. It, it means amending the agenda, et cetera, and it's additional work. But this is fine. Done. Thank you. Next. Uh, Ten. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Ten. This is a discussion vote hunting on town of situate conservation land. Uh, it's been requested by citizens that in view of the recent purchases over the past four or five years of a large amount of conservation land over in especially the West End, <clears throat> that it may be time to take a look at the, uh, at the land use in that area. Uh, I don't know if anybody from the audience wants to speak to it. Karen? Karen Conley will uh, come up and speak to it. Karen Connolly, 30 Roundtree Lane. Thank I you. want to thank you for putting this on the agenda. As anyone who watched town meeting knows, I'm interested in the fact that um, there is currently on the books a bylaw that allows hunting and shooting in the west end of Situate. Um, I don't know how long that bylaw has been on the books. It's very brief, and it just refers to hunting and discharge of firearms. Uh, we now own over 330 acres of land in the west end, and that land is currently available for hunting and shooting. Um, I think at the very least the Conservation Commission needs to look at what the best use of that land is, uh, that rules and regulations need to be put in place, that there needs to be uh, communication with the public in terms of, you know, what is allowed or not allowed out there. Um, I know you also put on the agenda the bylaw review. I do think we should look at the bylaw and see if that needs to be amended. Um, I guess my question would be, in the interim, um, if the bylaw, if if we do a bylaw review and re and make the by uh, change the bylaw, when would we have to vote on that? Could we do it at special town meeting, or would it have to be done in April? I that would depend upon the bylaw review committee and how fast they work on it. I would think, uh, uh, town administrator, that if they worked on it and they got a a, 
a report back to us that could be done in the fall. Yes, if they recommend you change bylaws at a special. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay. the answer is the earliest would be the fall. <clears throat> So right if there is one because I will tell you that I've been through all the applications on all the land purchases in the West End and I saw no reference at all to hunting and shooting on those properties and it's just kind of a quirk that this bylaw exists that allows that to happen and um, so I would just say that I, I think that if the town meeting had known that hunting and shooting was allowed out there I'm not quite sure people would have looked at the land purchases quite the same way which is why I made such a fuss at the meeting. So I thank you for um, doing this, and I appreciate um, the action that you're taking. Yeah, go ahead, Tony. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, and, and the bylaw is, it's, it seems pretty old. It's a little bit vague where it says right. hunting's not allowed to the east side of, of 3A. With Obviously, the exceptions of the marshes right. up in Minot and, and the glades and, uh, the glades and on, and on uh, at the North River. Right. Um, and obviously the town follows the Massachusetts general law in terms of what you can fire and how close Correct. you can be to homes and stuff like that. But obviously it's very prudent to do that. Well, the I don't time, know. If, whoop, yeah. um, the time period, um, you know, as you mentioned, even if they got something figured out in the next couple of weeks, still there's not going to be a special town meeting for months. So I think one of your points you've brought up in the past is there should be signage out there so that people who are going out to enjoy the passive recreation on this property that we've purchased at least know what they're getting into and wear proper attire and um, you know and don't accidentally get you know get injured out there right because as it stands right now I don't I've actually been through all of the, the regulations about hunting and um, you can actually hunt for crows starting in July through next I think it's April so we actually can eat. And I don't really like crows, but you know, I think I'd be a little shocked if I walked out in that land and ran into someone who was shooting crows. But you can. Personally, it's legal. I find, them, I find them a little stringy. So, you know, and I just I, I like I said, I think this was unintentional that this bylaw existed and to be honest with you, when I went through the bylaws and saw four or five pages worth of bylaws related to dogs and one you know, short sentence related to hunting and shooting. And I make the distinction between hunting and shooting because shooting, I think you can just go out and shoot a target if you want, and that's not clear to me either. So, um, but if you're hunting, that's different. That is very regulated. But again, I, I wasn't aware of the fact that you could shoot crows for like seven months. So, Mr. Yeah, Karen, this is great that you brought this up, and everybody else I know, several other selectmen, and and this this is really good. Um, obviously, we're not making a decision on this tonight, and we're right. not going to have a huge discussion tonight. Right. Um, you know, we've referred this essentially to the Conservation Commission. I see members of the CONCOM out there, and uh, we have a note in here from uh, Tricia, the town administrator, about CONCOM has expressed interest in sponsoring a workshop or two to get town input and, and all this sort of thing, and you'll obviously be involved in that. Overall, I think this is just a, a good example of how we need to manage change. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, we don't want any change going on at all. Well, change is happening. We're, we're, we're buying these lands, which is all good stuff. Hunting, that's also good stuff. we got to make sure we manage so this can all work together. And so I really applaud you for uh, bringing this to everybody's attention. And it's going to be a process. I think it's, it's also very good to have, as a, as a, no pun intended, a target of the special town meeting to have a bylaw change if that's what needs to be but let's expedite this it's not going to happen in a week but also let's not have this stretch on for years and years and years this should be a relatively straightforward thing for you members of the concom out there you know thanks for picking this up and running with it and uh helping get community feedback and, and doing due, due diligence um, on those lands well i especially want to point out that i did vote in favor on the advisory committee of building parking lots so people can have access. So I'm not against people having access. I just want to be sure everyone knows what the rules of the road are and that we are clear about what they are. And you know, if you go on the uh, Trustees of Reservation website, you can see that they've got very clear you know, um, uh, information about what is and isn't allowed on their property. So you know, I think this is all just kind of all of a sudden come together. And my hope is, is that we're going to be as good at managing the you know the conservation land that we have as we are managing our beaches and our harbor. Yeah. Great point. Thank you, for the board. Just one last comment, Al. Al, is it possible to get some signs up there in the interim so that people are just aware that hunting 
is allowed in that area. I'll talk to the Conservation Commission about yeah. having to do that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, uh, to that point, my question would be, can the Conservation Commission take some interim steps, for example, just uh, impose a moratorium until the decision is made about what will and will not be allowed? That, I don't, my suspicion Go is ahead. I don't think we can do that. I, I don't think that can be done just by the Conservation Commission because that would require um, one committee deciding on a town applicable bylaw. Well, I think they can do things that are more restrictive than the bylaw. Well, the, they're going to get together and discuss it. That may be a question for the Conservation Commission, right? Rather than us discuss it here. Because okay. We really can't give you an answer. All right. Uh, so All right. we're going to pass this on if it's voted here tonight to the Conservation Commission and another another motion to pass on to the bylaw review. Right. At that time, the Conservation Commission can make their determination with whether they want to. I mean, they're going to have public meetings, I think, as Mr. Murray said, uh, and that's where the, this can be really vented. Great. Uh, one way or the other. So I'll entertain a motion. Move the board, select, move board select and request an opinion from the Conservation Commission regarding hunting as it relates to writing new conservation <laughs> restrictions and or reviewing existing restrictions. Second. Before we take a vote, I saw any discussion from the audience? Men, gentlemen in the back, if you could identify yourself, please. Uh, Ernie Foster on 109 Clap Road. Yeah. Um, I know the Massachusetts Fisheries and Wildlife would be more than happy to help with signage and any other type of uh, uh, understanding of, of rules and regulations as far as setbacks and things like that. They're very uh, helpful in that manner. And you have the commissioner that lives in Hingham, who is very familiar with this area and all the conservation land. So I think that'd be a great resource to look into. Thank you. Thank you. Al took note of that, I'm sure. So if there is some. Uh, need for advice on signage, we'll get that. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Motion? Uh, to second on the, on the bylaw review, if you would. Move the Board of Selectmen request that the Bylaw Review Committee review General Bylaw Number 30100, Public Safety, Section 3100, Firearms and make recommendations on any revisions, edits, or changes that may be necessitated. Second. Motion has been made and seconded before we vote on this. Uh, and I know there are people here uh, very interested in this. When the appropriate meeting comes up, whether it be conservation or bylaw review, uh, and you have feelings one way or the other on this issue, that is the place to go and to express those feelings and, and have some effect on, on what the result will be. So I encourage you to go to the bylaw review meetings or notify them that you'd like to be notified when they do have their meetings, if that's possible, uh, and just keep on top of this issue, because that's where it's really going to be, be talked about and decided. So, Having said that, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number 11, insurance. Trisha. Um, there's a memo from me to the board in your packet. We uh, went out to bid for our uh, FY13 and beyond general liability and related coverages. This is um, including police and fire accident. Um, this is the major insurance package, umbrella, public officials, school board liability for the town. Um, as you will see, we had um, a few bids this year, and um, we had increased the budget due to a variety of circumstances, most of which was some losses, i.e. the storm we had in December 2010, but also um, I think it's no surprise to anybody that the insurance market rates have increased for not only uh, municipalities but other people who require insurance. That being said, we had very favorable responses to the bids. We're well within the appropriation. We will, uh, for the second time since we've bid the general liability insurance, have a surplus um, that will be available for other purposes. So uh, if you don't have any other questions, I believe Kim gave you one amended motion for the police and fire and um, another, and then the motion that you have in the packet. Um, I'm very excited about the new general liability insurance carrier. It's with the Mass Interlocal Insurance Association in terms of the services that we will now receive and the regular inspection reviews. And um, 
once again, very happy we'll have a facilities manager to handle all the recommendations about our public buildings and properties that will be coming through. And I'll make sure the board sees a copy of those. I think it will be very helpful as we move forward with the public facilities plan as well. Thank you. Board? I just have a question, if I may. Um, I'm very impressed by this. And on page two of your summary here, um, it talks about essentially, that being said, almost $100,000 can be made available as a surplus for FY13. So that's, that's essentially saying that, if I'm reading this right, we're saving $100,000 by doing this action because of prior costs were so much more and this is less expensive. Is that correct? Or well, the bids came in well, and we did the appropriation um, because I was concerned and had talked to, as you know, Mark Sandoms, an yeah. insurance person, and talked to folks at the MMA conference. So the bids came in lower mm -hmm. than, than we budgeted, you know, expected that that will be. Yep. No, it's a great example of additional savings. It's $100,000 right there. And this happened two years ago when we did it. Yep. Um, and we were able to reappropriate that money at the special town meeting, 75000 to the school, 25000 yeah. to the town. Yeah. And it's an example where the MMA really comes in to play. You know, that we go to the conference and we do that sort of stuff, but these are the types of consortiums and stuff that we're able to take advantage of because we're part of, of the MMA. So good job. I think it's, I think it's just uh, also important that I have to follow up on what, what, what Tony and Rick said is, when we save 100, whether it be $100,000 here or $300,000 there, uh, uh, as we save money as, as we go along, this is money that, that can be used for, to improve town services and also to retain town employees. I mean, the uh, towns all around us are being forced to lay off employees that had uh, a, a great deal of, uh, of suffering by the employees, and we do everything we possibly can to avoid that. I was thinking the other day that we as far as my memory is concerned, I don't think we've ha found it necessary because of good financial management to lay off an employee in over 25 years uh, because the proposition two and a half of many towns were laying off employees uh, left and right. We were able to keep uh, town employees at the same level, and I think that's a credit to the town. And this is the way we do it by saving 100000 here, 200000 there, and it, it pays off. So. Good Go financial management. Yep. Um, motion? Please. So there's going to be three of them. Uh, the first one is move the Board of Selectmen award its property insurance, including public employees blanket bond, crime insurance, boiler and machinery, commercial general liability insurance, including ambulance, EMT professional liability, automobile insurance, public officials liability insurance, police professional liability insurance, excess liability insurance, school board liability insurance, to the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association for a bid price of $286,504 for fiscal year 13. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. That's unanimous. Tony? Aye, yes. Um, the second one is move the Board of Selectmen award its uh, marina liability protection and indemnity coverage to CNA Insurance Company through MIIA for a bid price of $16,300 for fiscal year 13. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's Aye. unanimous. And the last one is move the Board of Selectmen award its fire and police accident coverage to the Hartford Insurance Company through... That's the wrong one. Excuse me? It's the amended one that uh, Kim gave you. That's I think that's the one I'm reading. All right. It should be VFIS, Tony. I'm sorry. Instead of Hartford? Right. And the amount is correct. The amended amount she gave you. It's VFIS. VS. F is in Frank. IS? Yep. Okay. So I'll, I'll read that again. Sorry. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen uh, select to award its fire and police accident coverage to VFIS right. Insurance Company through uh, Mitra's Insurance Agency for a bid price of $72,775 for fiscal year 13, 2013. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next, item number 12. Uh, an addendum to the Ellis Estate License Agreement. Trisha? 
Yes, um, a memo on the packet that I provided to the board um, talks about the CPC funds that the Arts Association was able to obtain for the Ellis um, estate and the difficulty that they have actually being the applicant because the town indeed owns that building. And um, so they came to us um, and asked how they could uh, be the applicant when in fact they don't own the property. And I contacted town council. He provided a mechanism by which we could amend their existing license agreement by an addendum, which you see attached. That will enable the, the town to sort of in local parentheses and allow them to apply for grants on our behalf. Um, Selectman Dennehy, I know, has been very involved in this. John, I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to add. No, you, you've captured it. Okay. That's good. So um, the board would therefore have a motion to approve this addendum to the license agreement to essentially allow them to um, apply for grants. There was a concern on the part of the Arts Association that um, the improvements that they would be making to the building as a result of these grants and other fundraising that they do would be recognized and the town wouldn't just, if the relationship ever severed, would be responsible for. So what town council proposed contemplates that as well and that's included in the addendum. Tony? Just one quick question, George. When you started out the conversation, you mentioned CPC funds. Mm -hmm. Now, those wouldn't be reimbursable. This is only grants that they get outside right, of right. the town. Right. Um, CPC gave them some money, and then they want to supplement that, those funds with other grant opportunities right. to do even more work at the estate. Great. Why don't I take a quick second? It's only a paragraph here. I'll just read the amendment so people can understand what it is. Oh, I'm sorry, Janet's here in case. Hi. I'm sorry, Janet. I didn't Janet, see you come in. Why don't you come up and just say hello? Hi. What I think most Janet of the explanation has been given, but. Janet Granaccio, the yeah. president of Situate Arts. I live on Pheasant Hill Drive in Situate. Right. Just uh, in consideration of the Situate Arts Association acting as the agent for the town and applying for grants to enhance the Ellis Estate, the Situate Board of Silicon agrees that in the event of a license is terminated by the town, the town will reimburse the association for any improvements made to the premises through grants achieved by the association, provided that the town administrator is notified and the grant prior to prior approval of the improvements. The cost of the improvements is documented at the time they're made. Reimbursement shall be made for the cost of the depreciated rate of 10% per year. And the reimbursement shall be subject to the appropriations of necessary funds. So, um, and again, this is for grants that, that the association goes out above and beyond what the town gives, um, gives them through CPC or whatever. Okay, the other question I guess I would have is, our license agreement, is it self-renewing at this point or is that something we need to consider too? There's a term in the license agreement. Okay, so we need to still resolve a long-term kind of situation or reapply every... Yes. I think, yeah, but I, th I think there is... I had, the license I agreement... I looked at, there is a self-renewing right. mechanism involved in that. Okay, so we so, need to work on yeah, confirming that as well. Or what do you call it? Calendar it and say, okay, take a look at it to renew it. But I mean, I think there is a, me there's a mechanism in there. Okay. Because I basically, that's the other half of that, so that we know that the effort we're doing isn't going to get someone else coming in and say, we'd like to. So as long as we're doing our job, you'll do your job. Yeah, I okay. don't think the town will do that. They won't do that. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? Just to, there is, we have a copy of the lease right here, and it does outline this, that it's, it's basically the current mm -hmm. license goes till July 1, 2013. Notwithstanding anything set forth herein, you can terminate whatever. But if no termination notice has been given, the term may be extended on a two-year basis, so long as the party so extending delivers written notification of each extension to the other party. So, who would be the one notifying? Just so you would be notifying us. Okay. <laughs> in other words, it's it's to your benefit to keep renewing it. Okay. Right. So it's just written right in the lease. July first, two thousand and thirteen. So sixty days. Uh, 30 days prior to that. We would notify you that we intend to stay. Right. So okay. June 1st. <laughs> That's the latest. You SMC. could probably do it next January. You could probably do it now and say we're going to renew it. And yeah. And just to clear it up. Yeah, we are going to renew it. You can put it on the record right now. Yeah. <laughs> put it in writing. Need okay. right. <laughs> you need something written. You need something written. Okay. Thank you. Thank Will you. the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the addendum to the license agreement between the Situate Arts Association and the Town of Situate, allowing it to act as the town's agent in applying for 
and administrating grants to enhance the Ellis estate provided that the town will reimburse the association for any improvements made to the premises through said grants received by the association with the provisions and exceptions noted in the addendum. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Uh, number 14. 13. 13. Sewer betterment deferral. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant sewer betterment deferral number 12 1. Second. Discussion? Just a, Tony? Just a quick discussion. This uh, deferral, written through it, it's, it's, uh, it's fine with me, but just to clarify, the deferral isn't a, um, and John, you may know, this just, it just passes it on. Yeah. What happens is, is that the applicant has applied saying they've met certain criteria um, for deferring it, but they're going to end up paying it. So when the house is sold, they're going to be paying not only the amount that's owed under the betterment, but they're also going to be paying at an interest rate. So the town is collecting its money at some point. And due to their financial situation, they're unable to pay it, and so they've asked us to defer it, and that's what we're doing. And it's an elderly. And we're not describing who the person is due to the privacy, so that's the reason why we're not getting into full details on it. Right. Did we get a motion on that? Yep. Did we get a second? Yes. Yep. We did. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, resignation of the treasurer collector. Uh, Tony, if you would read the memo from uh, Jay Mapato. Sure. Thank you. After much thought and great consideration, I agree to inform you that I'll be resigning from my position as treasurer collector of the town of Situate. Uh, this is a difficult decision for me, one I did not make lightly. I expect my last day of work to be June 26, 2012, in order to complete some annual tasks prior to my departure. It has been most rewarding experience to facilitate many changes that I have implemented over the past five and a half years of my employment. I have been fortunate to have extreme pleasure to work with many dedicated employees, boards, and committees since 2006, most notably the staff of the Treasurer Collector's Office and, of course, the Board of Selectmen. Um, people welcome me upon my arrival and continue to work collaboratively with me in my ongoing endeavors to improve the town's procedural matters as they relate to financial position. As you know, I've accepted a treasurer position in a neighboring town, a smaller town of Cohasset. Um, there's significant change there, but I look forward to the new assignment. I'll miss Situous employees and the wonderful residents I've encountered over the years. Um, last but not I want to thank having the opportunity to be part of a very special town hall family. And the board gives uh, both thanks and congratulations and wishes for success to Jane uh, as she moves on to Cohasset. And we wish, wish her nothing but the best. She served the town of Citroën very well, and we appreciate that very much. Motion? Motion. It's with regret that I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the resignation of Jane Lopardo, Treasurer, Collector, and further that the town of Situate Board of Selectmen thank her for her service to the town of Situate. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next, the assignment to committee commissions, board of council liaison position by the board of selectmen. As we know, the board of selectmen not only serve on the board of selectmen, but we also liaison to to most, if not all, committees in the town of Situate. Uh, to the board, we have a list in front of us of the committees that, and the assignments of last year. Why don't I just go down them? If, if, if you're happy with your assignment, then so be it. I was going to move, since um, Sean's not here, that he take half of them. <laughs> I can and then split up the remaining half, Mr. Chairman. Do you, you want to limit it to half? <laughs> uh, he's got a lot of duties as clerk now. I'm not sure he can handle But that's not a bad idea. Uh, advisory committee, I'll continue doing that if no one has a problem. Animal control board, board is Sean. He will continue doing that. Beautification is myself. I will do that. Board of Health is Sean. I know he likes that. By Law Review Commission, Mr. Danahy. Sure, I like that still. Mr. Murray Cable Television Advisory Committee. Certainly. Tony Capital Planning. Sure. Commission on Disabilities, Mr. Dennehy? Please. Yep. Community Preservation Committee, Mr. Murray? Sure. Uh, Conservation, Mr. Murray? Sure. Council on Aging, Mr. Dennehy? Yes. 
Economic Development Committee, the new committee, we haven't had a liaison to it. Accepting volunteers, Sean? Or I, I'd be glad to do that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Murray. Uh, financial forecast, Tony? Sure. Thank you. Historic, John? Yes. Housing Authority, I'll continue to do that. Planning Board, Mr. Danahy? Please. Plymouth County Advisory Board, I'll do that. Public Building, Sean? Sure. Recreation Commission, Sean? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Renewable Energy Committee, Paul Reedy? Paul, Paul will accept that. We'd love to have him. He's done a great job. It was great. obvious by the plaudits we're getting, not only from uh, local officials, but by <coughs> officials as high as the governor's office who are recognizing the town of Sitchwood's efforts uh, in this area. School Committee, Vignani and Harris? Sure. Sitchwood Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Murray? Sure. Social Coalition, Mr. Murray? Sure. Street Acceptance Committee, uh, I think that goes to the chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, ritual for chairmanship. Tom Webpage, mm -hmm. Tony? Sure. Traffic Rules and Regulations, Norton, Murray? Sure, I think we can continue our strong partnership there. I think we probably can. Water Resources, Mr. Murray? Certainly. Waterways, Mr. Murray? Yep. Zoning Board of Appeals, Mr. Denny? Yes. I believe our work is done on those. Thank you all for renewing your interest in those committees. And Sean actually does want to change on some things. You know, I, I'd be glad to talk to him about some of these stuff. I think Sean would appreciate uh, taking more on. He's always looking for more to do. Um, the next is uh, acceptance of the gift. Joe, Joe Kelly, yes. Veterans Council, if you come up, Joe, and give us some information on <coughs> On that, I didn't. I didn't realize that uh, you started at uh, six thirty. I was going to try to sneak in on a walk-in, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what I'd like to do while I'm here is give you a little bit of an update on what the uh, Veterans Advisory Council has accomplished in its last three months or so and uh, uh, being active. Uh, <clears throat> number one, we we did get that. A, just a little careful, and that's not really on the agenda. Joe. Okay. So well, to, what do you want to address? Sneak it in if you'd like somehow. Okay. But we'd like to talk about the gift and how that ties in with the great work the Veterans Council has been doing for the past. All right. Uh, we we uh, petitioned uh, the uh, the uh, Military Friends Foundation for a thousand dollar grant, and that grant is going to be used. Uh, for our outreach programs uh, to the veterans in Situate. Uh, the thousand dollars has been deposited into uh, the general account uh, under uh, a restricted line, I believe it's called. Um, so uh, we haven't used any of the monies yet. Uh, and uh, there are some things happening in the very, very near future we may need the monies for. That's great. I wonder, I, I imagine, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that grant was given due to the work uh, of the the uh, Veterans Advisory Council, and, and could you just fill us in on, on that? Um, well, I, I, I have a, a, a very strong personal connection to the foundation myself. Uh, I have personally done some work with the foundation with uh, uh, the uh, uh, tax line 32E uh, and, uh, you know, promoting that, uh, additional monies going into the foundation. Uh, again, that foundation is, is dedicated to Massachusetts uh, veterans uh, from National Guard, reservists, and Air People. Uh, they're extending that uh, through, the, through the Valor Act uh, that was just passed last week at the State House, where it will be extended to all veterans in Situate and its uh, families and Gold Star families. Great. So, Thank you. I, I just want to mention while I, while I have it here, uh, last Thursday, the Military Friends Foundation uh, honored State Treasurer Steve Grossman and State Senator Mike Rush, along with the family of Sergeant Michael Kelly of Situate, and that is Joe and his family, and they were honored, honored in Boston at the Parkman House at an affair uh, last Thursday, the 31st, and we'd like to, first of all, make, notice, make note of that and congratulate you, Joe, and thank, thank you, you for thank you, Joe. all you continue to do, and I'm glad these people recognize you uh, we've known it for a while, but mm -hmm. that's nice to get some statewide recognition. Yeah. 
congratulations on that. Thanks. Thanks. And thank you for getting that award uh, of a thousand dollars. We can certainly use mm -hmm. that in the veterans uh, uh, So we we sent them a thank you note on, be, uh, on behalf of the the council, and we also received. Uh, some monies, actually gift cards from uh, the food pantry, Sitchwood Food Pantry, uh, which um, I petitioned the uh, clergy association, which actually uh, oversees the food pantry, and uh, they presented Don with $385 worth of food stamps, not food stamps, but gift cards right. to uh, the stop and shop uh, to, to be used at his discretion for veterans that need help immediately. Uh, and that will be replenished on a regular basis as needed. Right. Right. We were using the money from Hingham, by the way. Uh, that we're getting all right. Yeah. So that's that stopped, right. and, and now it's coming right from Situate. On the board, any comment? motion. Motion. Oh. Or comment? Uh, no comment. Obviously, it's great work. You know, and uh, long overdue. And it's great to see the committee really making effective changes so quickly. So right. it's it's great stuff. Um, move the board of selectmen vote to accept. On behalf of the town of Situate, a check for $1,000 for the Veterans Advisory Council from the Military Friends Foundation, and further the board thank the foundation for this most generous gift. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Joe. All right. Uh, 17 is the animal, the annual appointment process. Uh, Want me to announce the vacancies? Yeah, would you have them there? Sure, Thank yep. you. Um, so these are vacancies on committees. And Kim, what are we looking for people to fill out applications and get it to you by? I think there's a date All right, prior to June 13th. Right. Just read it. Um, so the vacancies on the committees, commission boards, and councils. So the Animal Control Board has a vacancy. The Beautification Commission has at least a vacancy. The Public Building Commission has vacancies. The CP uh, Community Preservation Act Committee has vacancies. I think there's two at-large positions every year. Um, the Historical Commission, the Cable Television Committee, and the Waterways Commission. We will, uh, we'll, we will be updating the list of vacancies daily on the town website. We would like to encourage people to check the list and to apply via email or in person prior to June 13th to the Selectman's Office or in care of Kim K. Donovan, that's K-D-O-N-O-V-A-N, at town.situate.ma.us. I think there might be one on water resources as well. Just double check that. And there's an opening on planning board. As an alternate. Right. And I think <coughs> there's an opening on the advisory committee. Advisory committee is actually um, right. done by the moderator. The moderator, but if someone's interested, they can. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. We have received a letter from uh, Bill Lombard, the chairman of the planning board, uh, announcing the vacancy on the planning board and suggesting that the planning board interview uh, the candidates and come back to us for a joint vote. Uh, before I reply to Bill, is there anybody on the, this committee who would like to uh, ask me to ask Bill to serve in that, that screening committee, if I can put it that before, way? Before we go there, there was, there was some discussion about whether that's the way the process should actually work um, or whether we should actually um, interview the people ourselves. I don't know what, what the thought of the board is on that. Well, Tr Trisha, do you have any thoughts on? It's either w either way the board wants to do it is fine. Both are acceptable. It's just as I shared with the board in my experience, it's usually done jointly and the candidates are vetted together at the same time rather than one recommending another. But I mean, the way you've done it or Bill is suggesting is not prohibitive. It's just, you know, different. It, it, but it may be traditionally how you've done board's, it. Whatever the board's pleasure is that we can request. I, I have no, I mean, if the planning board wants that this is going to be a member on their board as an alternate, not an actual voting member, but as an alternate who will be going to the meetings, and they're going to interview a host of people, then they're coming back with one, or are they going to have, give us uh, one or two people to take a look I at? I believe in the past they've come back with one recommendation, but I can't. Please let just come back with their recommendation and we've jointly voted it. 
I question. I, I, I'm not a thousand percent sure on that. Yeah, I, gonna, I thought they came with like one or, or, or a few finalists, is what I thought we, they had done before. We could ask them. I, know, we could ask them I mean, cause I'd, I'd, my only point is this I don't mind interviewing them and setting up a meeting to do it, but if, if they're going to go through that process and they're going to give us two or three finalists for us to kind of jointly look at it, I'm content with that. I'm content with their ability to interview and go through that process. That's, that would be my position on it. Could we ask if the board look at, would, would we ask the uh, planning board to Mr. Limbaca uh, to give us a list of more than one candidate, to give us a list of two or three? I think it would be great if we, at our joint meeting, were able to discuss more than one candidate, certainly. So, you know, on the other hand, if the applicant pool is such that there's really one clear, um, candidate candidate that, that seems head and shoulders then that's one but I still would like to have a couple that we've you know talked about for sure and I also would like to see a list of everybody who expressed interest I, I want to I'd like to see that so um, you'd like know, to see a, a list of everyone that applied and if uh, in their judgment there were more than one qualified candidate they, they submitted yeah a list. so we can discuss as I mean, a joint committee as a joint discussion well, I think what they're asking us now is to select someone from us to go be involved in the process. No, no they're not. No. I'm, ask, I'm oh, okay. asking if, if anyone would, right. well, any one of right. us would like to do that. Uh, their, their letter really, as I read it, uh, said that they were going to do the process themselves and come back to us with their candidate. So, Tricia, is that the proper way to do it, is, I guess is my question? That the planning board again I, I was only sharing what my prior experience right. is because it's an elected board and they're filled jointly so the way if that's what you've done in the past that's acceptable my experience has been as you said that people put their names in they're jointly interviewed by both committees and then nominations are put in place the alternative is to have two or three people come to you let them say if ten people apply they they you know they pre-screen and recruit and recommend those three or two, and then you would come together and interview those folks. Yeah. My thought is there's only going to be two or three. I don't think yeah. we're going to get a mad rush for. You never know. Right, but. Well, how about this? I'm how fine. about I how about know. suggesting maybe um, we um, somebody either gets in touch with Bill, the liaison for it, which I guess would be me, and, and put it one of two options. If it turns out that they have a number of people who are applying for the position that they vet it out, kind of pre-screen it. If it turns out that there are only two or three people, then why not have a joint meeting? And then um, we'll, we'll interview the people and then have a discussion and then a vote for it. I like that. Sense. Okay, sense. I got the letter. I, I received the letter. I'm sorry, then no, Joe. You but I don't mind, you know, if you want to do it, that'd be my guest. Right. Um, why don't you just speak to them and see. Okay. If it's more than three, then why don't they vet it down to? You got it. it to, to, to three. Two or three, and then from there. Right. Good. All right. right. Done. Makes sense. Done. Done. Good. <clears throat> good. 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 Uh, uh, other business. Board of Selectmen. I think Rick Murray. First of all, welcome back, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Mr. Board. Gordon. Thank you very. Thank you. Welcome back. I uh, much appreciated to be here. I like to thank everybody who for all the elections actually, since this is my first meeting back after my work trip. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who ran and everybody threw their hat in the rings for all the uh, contested elections out there, not just the selection. And I have no other business other than that. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, um, it was in the newspaper. I'm glad to see that the sign was found. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Sitch in the Harbor. But I have to say, frankly, you know, it's great. I mean, it's a shame to see these things taken and, and, and destroyed. In this case, you know, it looks like it was a prank. They held on to it. It wasn't destroyed, and they were able to put it back. And uh, I thank the uh, uh, the town uh, DPW and uh, police for doing their jobs and going out and beyond their jobs to, to putting it up and fixing it. So um, that was nice. I also was going to say the Chamber of Commerce raised $500 last week at a golf outing for Sands, um, and that's the, um, I think it's St Strategic Alliance um, for natural disasters, and um, which is a town organization that deals with natural disasters from the moment the, the 
storm hits to the very end. And um, it's a great organization. It needs um, funding, and that's what they're doing. And the chamber did it at least a, a little bit to try to make money go their way for 500. Um, outside of that, I'll leave the sports update to Tony. Um, and um, that's it. Well, that's a great transition. Uh, <laughs> Just Here's two, you. Two, Here's two, sports. <laughs> Over Here's to sports. Tony. Just two quick sporting <laughs> events. Situate Lacrosse and Situate Tennis Team both won their first round playoff. Situate Lacrosse is playing right now in Wellesley. So uh, they are in the second round of the uh, Division II playoffs. So good luck to them. Um, on another note, Joe, I don't know if you were going to touch on it, but I don't think we've met since Memorial Day. Um, cool. That was a, uh, a wonderful event. Um, Good turnout. The parade's always fun, watching the kids march and, and the band and, and, and all the, the veterans involved there. The speeches were very poignant and very, um, um, you know, very touching. And I think, uh, you know, Mr. Kelly's here. You were a big part of the, the festivities. The gen uh, Brigadier General was there, and he uh, gave, a, gave a great speech. Joe as well. And it was just a wonderful day, and it really shows, uh, you know, the commitment of the town um, to such an important holiday. Um, and... It was a beautiful day, a good turnout, and I, I was really uh, proud of the town um, for the event. So thank you to uh, um, Don Knapp for putting it together and the grounds people for making it look so pretty and all the participants. I have one. You have one. Um, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, the Situate High School graduation is this weekend, and Mr. Zach is a senior and has been dutifully covering our cable meetings for the past several years and it's off to Harvard I believe right yeah. Zach mm -hmm. so I just want to thank you on behalf of the town we're going to miss you right. we hope you stay through the summer maybe yeah. to cover our meetings but congratulations to you and all the high school graduates on Thanks. Friday can we get your picture Zach so that people can see it did you zoom in on yourself you there on yourself. just give yourself <laughs> a little yeah. recognition get the Harvard jersey out there yeah. Yeah. It, it, it might it It might be easier to list the awards that Zach didn't win this year. Uh, <laughs> it seemed like every time we turned around, uh, Zach was be being given another award, and very justifiably so. Zach, congratulations. You're a credit to the Situate school system, and you're a credit to the town of Situate. So thank you. Thanks. We'll see you you're Friday. Uh, I have a couple of things, if you don't mind. The, uh, there's going to be a, uh, a DPW meeting on rules and regulations for sewer tie and we've discussed this over the uh, past years, I guess. And that meeting is going to be held on July 10th. And until then, and, and, and while these, uh, these new rules and regs will be in the DPW department and in the sewer division for anyone who would like to, uh, to look at them, any citizen who would like to look at them and review them before the meeting, which will be held on July 10th. Uh, I think I'm asking the board if my suggestion would be that we don't entertain, or the town does not entertain any more uh, sewer tie-ins, uh, emergency or not, until July 10th, uh, until these regulations are implemented and, and made, uh, made public. So that's anyone think, have a problem with that? I think that sounds great. Now, when you say regulations, are you really talking about our policies? No, we're talking, talking about, about, I think, the, the tie-in fees, the sewer yeah. tie-in fees, okay. and, and uh, I haven't seen the regulations. I know they're in Al's office. But yeah, and so then they would, after that meeting, they would come before us? Yeah, you have to so, As they always would, yeah. Right, right. yeah. Okay. The board has to approve them. So I just, just since I'm... I mean, there may very well not be anyone requesting a sewer tie-in in the next Understood. three weeks either. I don't know if I was just saying, so, rather than have yeah. an onslaught of... So or requests for tie-ins to the town. We have a selectman's meeting on July 10th, but you're not talking about no, I'm talking meeting. about a selectman's a, meeting. You're uh, talking about a separate DPW, separate DPW meeting. Separate DPW meeting, as I understand gotcha. it, Tricia. Perfect. And I think it's great not to entertain anything until then because we need to get our arms around that, so that's great. Uh, the other thing uh, that I'd like to, to mention, there's a transportation summit at South Station Mayor Menino has called it. It's a summit of, 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 I think, mainly greater Boston and South Shore communities to talk about transportation issues, uh, which are so important not only to, to Boston, but certainly to Situate. 
and our own Ann Verbine who's volunteered to go to that meeting. When is it, Ann? Monday the 10th. Monday the 10th of? Of June, June. at 2 p.m. Thank you. At the concourse. At the and I'm taking the 12 o'clock if anybody would like to join me. Well, I'm sure that that's, that's been publicized now on television. Anyone who would like to join you at the summit is <laughs> welcome. All right, thank you very much. And if you My pleasure. Come back to us with any news breaking <laughs> stories, we'd appreciate it. Uh, so, with tie ins, I think that's it, Zach. About, we, go yeah, ahead. Actually, about the other meeting on the. follow up on that? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. mention the meeting on the 18th. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on that. So this transportation summit and will will you be able to discuss things like um, the uh, termination of train service on the weekends and the cutback on all that sort of stuff? And because this board has expressed our strong displeasure with all those MBTA cutbacks and As so on. As has the South Shore Coalition. Yeah. Um, I intend to, as you know, I am no shrinking violet, that I will have things to say and will bring up the fact that we are very concerned about what is happening on the South Shore. And if, as a case in point, if they, they haven't quite figured out what they're going to do with Howell, but Howell could end up without any public transportation right. at the rate things are going. So it's, um, it will be very interesting to see what comes out of all of this. And I will be more than happy to let you all know what transpires. Yeah, please do. Please do. Uh, just as an aside, and not to get into any discussion on this, uh, yes, we are interested in transportation, and we are also interested in weekend transportation. However, having said that, we are only interested in, in it if the MBTA can put more people on the train. We are not interested, I don't think, in having weekend service return to situate uh, eight trains a day or six to whatever it might be with four people on it. I mean, that's still taxpayers' money to the town of Situate. The MBTA's uh, money spent is taxpayers' money and it's spent foolishly on trains with no one in it, then we don't want that. If they can find some way to, to put more people on that train, we welcome it. Your point is well taken. Thank you. Uh, next. On the, eight, on the on the eighteenth, Trisha, would you uh, on the eighteenth the meeting on? Uh, oh. <laughs> thank you, Tony. Got her by surprise. I was like, um, yes, um, the board last week sent out a letter to a variety of boards and committees, and folks involved in the management and operation of um, town buildings and services and education. Um, to discuss uh, the board's master facilities plan and what the next step should be. And before we start to spend the money that was appropriated at town meeting, um, the board has discussed um, at various times since um, they hit upon this plan last year um, what the proposal or consideration for different various town and school building needs would be. And um, so that meeting will take place with a facilitator um, at 6.30 on June 18th at the Situate Harbor Community Building. Now AK, also good. known as Pier 44. Put previously no, in the previously jar. known as uh, And this is a very important meeting, and I think the board will agree that we've invited all the stakeholders to this. I mean, everyone that, that has an interest in it or perceived interest or think they might have an interest <coughs> in, in what happens to the... Uh, Gate School Building, and I think that that group consists of about every every department in, in, in town. Uh, it would be behoove them to come there and, and to give their input on uh, what they'd like to see in that building, as far as their organization is concerned. Because that's a good time to step up and let that be known. And the reason why we're saying it is not just for the stakeholders or the town departments, but also for everybody in the audience and people mm -hmm. who are in the newspapers and on and TV land. So that if you're interested, come on down. It, 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 we're holding it there uh, because it, it's a lot bigger than this place. And, um, you know, this is the start of a, a major discussion of a strategic plan that, you know, could change and alter everybody's lives for the next 20 to 30 years. So come on down and participate. Be a part of it. And just to be clear, it's not for discussion of the Pier 44 building. It's discussion of all of the other 
town hall, gate school, all the ancillary buildings and all the departments and the structure of the town's buildings moving forward, which Pier 44 may be a part of that at some point in time, but it's not that discussion. Good it's point. bigger. Right, bigger. it's sort of like a chess piece of all the moving parts that we have out there uh, for a variety of reasons and needs and get some s feedback so you're not moving forward in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to note also that the, the Board of Selectmen will be making the decision uh, down the road if this all proceeds as we hope it does, as to who will go in there and, and, and uh, how that will happen. So it behooves, again, everyone to be there and, and, and give as much input as you can because when we, view, when we do make our decision, uh, who goes where, and it's, we'd like all the information we possibly could get. So, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Tony. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a question from the audience. There's a question. I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to clarify. Th this is the study for, um, that reflects the, um, is it the $375,000 feasibility study? This is the beginning of that. One is saying yes and one is saying no. But well, we're not spending the money. We're getting a committee of people together to start talking about it before yeah. we start yeah. spending the money, correct? The beginning of the so that's why he's saying yes, and that's why he's saying no, because I think you're probably yes, okay. okay. So I think no. you're probably what you're running into is the people, people who are interested, a large committee of people from various departments to get together and start discussing planning. This is what we're going to do going forward. I just the first to make meeting. Sure I understood this was what that part but it's also it's not a single three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars study. It is we have uh, the town at town meeting uh, graciously approved allocating up to $375,000 collectively for a series of studies. We might be, on the basis of this discussion that we're going to have and future discussions, we might realize that we need $22,000 to study public safety location. Mm -hmm. So we have that $375,000 that we're going to be able to draw against because town meeting already approved that. It's not a single $375,000 feasibility study. It's $375,000 allocated for this entire process. Some of it might be engineering consultants. Some of it might be a study of, of what we can do with this little corner of gates. Some of it might be what we can do with, as I said, public safety or what have you. So it's not a single $375,000 study. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is the acceptance. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to not release executive session minutes for the following dates, June 7th, 2011, September 21st, 2011, October 4th, 2011, October 18th, 2011, and January 17th, 2012, as these items are still pending or under town consideration. Second. Motion to be made to second the discussion. Any not? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Before we adjourn, Mr. Chairman, well, uh, former Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, Tony, a few weeks ago we promised you a gift we gave you the card. We'd like to follow this up with the gift. I will not repeat the uh, what was said a couple of weeks ago, but we really appreciate everything you did during a very difficult year and something to remember. Thank you very by. much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we adjourn, if we could just do the uh, item that we added at the beginning, which is to sign the public documents. Yes. Yeah. And now move Go ahead. to adjourn. Move to adjourn. And move to adjourn and seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Good night, folks. Good night. Thanks. <laughs>